This is the beginning of the sea lettuce scarf. It's begun here with provisional cast on, although you may use a regular cast on. So the, the green yarn is my waste yarn and it will be undone and removed. So the scarf was begun here and I've knit a series of short row triangles with picots along the edge. These are rows 1 to 16 of the pattern. And rows 1 to 16 have repe been repeated four times, so I've got four triangular wedges, which brings me round to a semicircle situation. On the last repeat, I end on row 15. I only knit as far as the centre of the scarf. Now this is the bit that tends to catch people out, just because I think it's an unusual thing to do. But let's take a look at the crochet provisional edge. If we flip it over, we can actually see the Australian Cousins. I had 10 stitches initially. And if I look carefully, nestling in between the two layers of green, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Australian Cousins, which is what you would expect to find. If you have 10 regular direction stitches, you'll find nine cousins. There is also one other little bit. There's this funny little twist at the end of the row and we can use that to make up the missing stitch. The next stage of this scarf is to knit up the other half of the scarf stitches. So we can do this in a number of different ways. We can knit up along a regular cast on edge just as if you were picking up stitches for a neckline. Or I can tuck my knitting needle that's the little twist at the end of the row, not truly an Australian cousin, but we, we do need 10 stitches. So if I knit up into there, and then just work my way along, knitting up into each Australian cousin as I go. I call them Australian cousins because they're down under, and in between the original direction stitches. So I can keep going along this edge without even removing the provisional edge. It's always a good idea to remove the provisional edge immediately afterwards, just to be sure you're in the right spot. But I can also undo this edge as I go and pop out the cousins so that I can knit them up just like ordinary stitches. This initial end will be a little, little bit of a twist and I will have to tease the yarn out of it. this end I'm going to have to just untangle the yarn from that twist at the end of the row. This one isn't truly an Australian cousin but since I need 10 stitches I'll knit up into it. It will depend, I'm going to knit it with a twist in it so it knits up nice and, nice and closed. And it will depend on which end you cut, um, started working into your provisional yarn, whether you're able to unravel it from this end or the, the far side. If your, uh, if your provisional edge unravels from the far side, just pop off the cousin stitches and put them onto a spare needle and then knit across them. But if your yarn is docile and has been knit for a while, you don't even necessarily need the spare needle, but it's a good idea. Two more cousins left to go. And now I should have 20 stitches. I've got my first five from the first side, the one from the twist, and the nine Australian cousins. My scarf now is a sim simply a series of seven row repeats with wedges of short rows and I can keep on going till I have just sufficient yarn to do another semicircle at the far end. Another question I'm often asked about the sea lettuce scarf is when I travel with them I fold them up like this and people first of all wonder what they are and it's always fun to show somebody unraveling the sea lettuce scarf and releasing it from its little nest. So I'll just quickly show you how to fold a sea lettuce. Open up either the beginning or the end of the scarf flat on your hand 
and simply fold it around with the frilly edges outermost. So you're pulling the centre vein around and letting the edges flap out and this will produce a most attractive and somewhat puzzling display of your sea lettuce scarf. And here is the sea lettuce scarf, all folded up for travel. <laughs>